Thanks, Zero Four. Lots and lots of stuff to do with Euro 4 missions. Euro 4. Euro 4. So, what the f*** is Euro 4? So, first of all, Euro 4 is part of a larger European directive called EU 168-2013, a 77-page document that's very in-depth. The approval authority shall put together an information package consisting of the information folder accompanied by the test of carrying out their functions, blah, 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 blah. What? <laughs> 168 slash 2013 contains other things, such as how far your headlights can be apart, ABS and other bike shit you don't care about. Right, Euro 4 is concerned with the emissions from motorcycles. Euro 1 came in in 1999 and set the precedent. Euro 2 arrived in 2005 and tightened up the regulations a bit. Euro 3 came in 2007 and that's where we set unaffected until 2013 when Euro 4 was announced, but didn't take effect until this year. Euro 4 governs the emission regulations from all new model bikes in 2016, but all new bikes in 2017. Even Euro 5 isn't that far down the road due to take effect in 2020. Right, let's compare Euro 4 to the outgoing Euro 3. Euro 3 tightened the limits on carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and nitrogen oxide. This meant some bikes suffered in the weight department because they needed large catalytic converters, CATs, to be fitted. Other bikes got crappy fuel injection which led to snatchy throttles, but engineers worked their way around it all eventually. So Euro 4. Only took us like two minutes to get here. Maximum carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons are reduced by 43%, nitrogen oxide by 40%, but this isn't the most significant change. First is the introduction of the durability test. Now, with Euro 3, new bikes are already slightly broken in ones at about 1000 kilometers are tested for emissions, but with Euro 4 there's a follow-up test. So depending on the size of the bike, up to 20,000 K later, the bike is retested to ensure it still beats the emission standard. This means cats might have to be better made. They might have to be made using more precious materials, which makes them so effective, but they cost more and they might add a bit more weight. The whole exhaust system might need to be redesigned because if the cat gets too hot, it can become damaged. There's also a percentage to which exhaust will naturally degrade over time. This means engineers need to overshoot the limit by as much as 30% to ensure the bike will still pass the regulations in 10 years time. Which is good because Euro 5 is coming in and that reduces the max emissions by 50% in comparison to Euro 3. The second requirement is for bikes to have onboard diagnostic systems fitted. The goal is for the bike to measure and record the status of its emissions which will allow technicians to plug into your bike and find problems and if it still complies with regulations later in life. Good thing no one would cheat this. Euro 5 is set to build on this system so your bike can self-diagnose and self-correct its emissions. Which will probably be fun when you put your slip-on exhaust on. <sighs> Finally, vapor from fuel contains a much higher percentage of the unburnt hydrocarbons in comparison to the exhaust gas. As soon as you fill your tank, they start venting to the atmosphere via the breather pipe. So Euro 4 limits how much of that is allowed to escape. So the bikes need to pass a shed test. Sealed housing for evaporative determination tests is very scientific. A bike is placed in a shed and the doors are closed so the fumes it give off can be measured. Yeah. So what does all this mean for you? Well, for you not a lot, you can't ride a bike yet. Stop struggling! Stop struggling! Well, up front, not a whole lot. If you're, It's only for new bikes in Europe, so if you already own a bike, doesn't affect you. If you're in America, Asia, Africa, any other market, it doesn't directly affect you. Though you do have to keep in mind how big a market Europe is. Especially for larger CC bikes, it sells more than double what the US does each year. And making different bikes for different markets is expensive. Sure, some people like Ducati with their 959 have different exhausts for different markets, but are you gonna change the electronics package too? Because they're not just trick exhausts that are needed to comply anymore. Bikes need to use as little fuel as possible. So you'll see technology like ride-by-wire throttles become more and more common. Sure, Euro 4 doesn't explicitly state you require them. However, they offer emissions advantages because you can optimize settings independently of what the rider is demanding from the throttle. When Euro 3 hit, fuel injection became very commonplace because it allowed fuel to be used exactly as needed. Variable valve timing can also aid emissions and all of the above help to make a better riding experience. Life is really tough for a bike engineer right now, but for us, engine output continues to rise, all while using less and less fuel. And with all these electronics going in, traction control and riding modes are becoming more and more commonplace, making bikes safer. However, that does raise the question, what mode do you test the bike in? 
I mean, if your bike has four or five different modes, do you test it in A, do you test it in B? Even looking at Yamaha's line, in some bikes, A mode is the most powerful, in other bikes, B mode is the most powerful. So do you find out which one is the worst and test there? Likely, you'll just test whatever is default. For 2016 slash 17, motorcycles are tested using the worldwide motorcycle test cycle. It provides a standard measure for fuel emissions and fuel consumption. However, the sheer variety of motorcycles makes it very difficult to get a truly fair standardized measurement. Ignoring the lower test for low output vehicles like scooters, etc. for a second, bikes are only tested up to 125 kph. So when it comes to motorcycles that can do 320 kilometers per hour, it can be very easy for them to pass by sitting in a, a low load, low speed part of the engine mapping. Conversely, some high power, low CC bikes, such as 600 sport bikes, are suffering because they require higher engine speed to produce their power up, thus using more fuel. So because the engines are expensive to retrofit and they're not selling super well at the minute because of all this, if you see a load of 600 sport bikes disappear from the showroom next year, you know why. So what's your takeaway? Basically nothing. Progress continues. Bikes will come with more tech, which you can feel how you want to about, but no manufacturer would dare produce a less powerful version of their bike. So every new bike you buy is gonna be more fuel efficient and faster. Only manufacturers are bound by Euro 4. So if you don't like the new big exhaust on your BMW ZX GXXR 1000 R, just put a slip-on exhaust on it or a full system like you were planning to do anyway. 